Welcome back to another video, guys. Today, we're answering some questions about social media, marketing, uh, business, all the things that I don't really like to talk about. So what I went ahead and did is put a little thing up in my stories over on Instagram to where you guys could submit some questions uh, about it. I wrote down a few of them. I actually wrote down some stuff I wanted to talk with you guys about, um, but I'm gonna try to cover all those questions today. Uh, there was a ton, I think like 50 or 60 questions, so it's really hard to answer all of them, but I broke them all down into little categories. I'm gonna try to talk about them here today. Uh, I don't want this video to get super long, but I think uh, this is a really important topic to talk about. Um, so if you wanna grow as a knife maker, sell more knives, um, understand social media a little more, you're not gonna wanna miss this video. Well, before I get into this video, um, today's kind of a weird day. I, I finished up a bunch of knives uh, two days ago. I had two more from my last batch that I didn't finish, just how everything worked out. So one's actually etching right now, that's getting a stone wash. One I got finished ground, the handles are glued up on it. Um, and I'm actually starting on the next big batch of knives, which there's 30 of them in this batch, which I'm crazy, but check this out. These are my, like, order books, okay? This was, let's see, this one I wrote 2019 on it. And I just totally finished this book, which is crazy. I mean, it's like, this is all just totally full of orders. Like, I'm kind of old school. I'm sure some people maybe do it on a computer or whatever. But when somebody orders a knife, I write it down in those books. And I don't know why, but there's this weird accomplishment that I just totally finished that book of orders and I got a new book here that we're starting on so that's what all these next knives in this batch are in that new book and I don't know maybe that's silly to you guys but there's some feels good feels good so anyways let's get into this video guys um I actually went ahead and wrote down a couple things that I wanted to talk about because I didn't want to miss anybody's questions I really appreciate every one of you guys that um, put questions over on Instagram. If you're not following me over there, make sure you do it so you can kind of get in on some of this. That's the best way um, for me to really communicate with you guys. So anyways, let's get into it. So I think the number one thing that everybody asked, um, and I kind of broke this down into, this was probably the most asked question and it's probably the hardest one to answer. And that is promoting your work and getting your work in front of as many people as possible, whether it be social media or going to local knife shows or however that is. And that's what I kind of want to talk about, but it's a super difficult subject to talk about because I think that um, trying to explain how I've grown, it doesn't really relate to how to grow today because it's just changing. Every every year I see this change in how to grow and um, it's just a constant battle. So I'm gonna at least explain to you guys how I've, what I've done to get where I'm at um, and maybe some of that stuff will relate to you and maybe you can use it to hopefully build in the future. Now I think I think Instagram is probably what most of you guys use uh, to sell your knives on. That's been my number one sales for the last, probably since I started four or five years ago of, of having Instagram. Once I started it, the sales started coming in. I started on Facebook, like I'm sure a lot of you guys have, selling to friends, family, um, and all that kind of stuff. And then it, I created a Facebook business account and was getting some sales from that. I then created an Instagram account and really quickly realized that Instagram has a lot more reach. Um, so what happened with me at least is starting that Instagram page, you know, I did a lot of research on how Instagram works, how to actually grow, how to reach. And like I said, it's changed so much that like when I first started over on Instagram, I was posting a, a photo of a knife I did or uh, maybe a work in progress photo every day. You know, that was the that was the one thing with that is you have to be consistent. You have to post every day. You have to engage with everything. And what happened is I was getting really good growth. Um, like there was a lot of days where I would get 
say 40 or 50 new followers in a day. Um, and right now, looking back, that's incredible. You know, that's something that doesn't happen now unless, I don't know, if you know how, you tell me because I can't figure it out. But so there was a long time where that was happening. And what I'd see is I'd get some good growth for a couple months and it would then taper off to where you're not getting any. And I think that what a lot of people have been asking me about lately is all of this stuff about a shadow ban and all this stuff that Instagram does to try to not promote weapons or you know knives and all this stuff that they just don't want on their platform. That's what it comes down to. And so there was a long time where I didn't see hardly any growth. You know, I think that it didn't necessarily have to do with the content I was putting out because that's very important. Um, but I think it has a lot to do with how Instagram works and, and it's a game. It's a big, it's a really sick game because if they would just let, let it work how it's supposed to work and people can see your work, it would be better for everybody, but they have this thing where they want to limit what people see. Um, and it really hurts a lot of people, which, and I don't agree with it at all because it hurts me as well. But what happened after a while is I thought I was in this weird shadow band thing to where I could post something, you know, it would get half the amount of likes that the one did before. Um, but you go to your account status and it would tell you, you know, there's nothing wrong with your account. Everything's fine. All this and that. So I think that a lot of you guys that have reached out to me are in this spot right now, which I'm not necessarily saying that there is a shadow ban kind of thing going on with it or not um because it's really hard to say and you'll never really know i mean it has been proven that they do it to certain accounts um and now what has happened with my account uh again we're getting super detailed on instagram because i do think it's really important um i've got an actual block on my account to where it shows every single post i put up is flagged and it basically says your post goes against star standards and it will not be shown to new followers, which is a huge problem. Um, and not only to new followers, I've noticed a huge drop in people that follow me can't see it as well. Um, and so this is what I'd actually consider a shadow ban because it shows, it's telling me that I'm putting stuff out that they don't wanna see, um, my account's limited, and again, it's a big problem. And the reason I'm kind of going into this in such detail is because when you have all your eggs in one basket, it's a problem. That's all it comes down to in any aspect in life, investing, money, all this stuff, you need to diversify a little bit. And that's what this has taught me because just, just for an example, if I post something right now, Okay, and I have, I think I've got about 17,000 followers on Instagram that I've grown 100% naturally, which is a whole other thing that you guys need to look into. A lot of these big accounts have a bunch of bot followers and they buy followers and all this stuff, um, which there's no point in doing. But now, if, so just for example, if I put out a picture on Instagram, um, out of 17,000 people that follow me, only a, some, the last picture I think I put up, only 2,000 of them see it. Um, which to me, if you have 17,000 followers on Instagram and you put a picture up, you know, a lot, everybody should see it. Obviously not everybody's gonna be on Instagram that day, but um, you can tell that they have totally limited my viewing of the photos or whatever you wanna call it. So again, it's frustrating, it's part of the deal, you can't do anything about it. And that's why I wanna talk about some other options other than Instagram to try to sell your work and grow. So, so outside of Instagram, I think that's gonna be what we need to talk about a little more is you can do whatever you wanna do with Instagram, you can work really hard at it, but you're still relying on that weird algorithm you're still relying on people seeing your stuff when they can completely control who sees what and and it's just a horrible spot to be in and unfortunately it's a spot we're all in so that kind of made me think what else can i do to branch out try to get my work in front of more people and not just people but people that are gonna buy knives when i started this youtube account i did it 
right around the time I went full time as kind of the same idea is I wanted to just branch out and get what I'm doing in front of more people. Now, the YouTube thing has turned more into something I just kind of enjoy doing. I enjoy sharing um, all of my little tips and tricks and stuff that I've learned from everybody else, and I share them here, um, and it's been, it's just been fun. I can't say it has created much um, knife sales for me exactly. Um, a few here and there, but not really anything to write home about. But I think that Again, branching out and putting it out in as many directions as possible is really key. So uh, not very long ago, it's actually silly, but I decided to make a website. And, you know, I sat down and I used Wix uh, to build this website. And I think that why I didn't do it sooner is really dumb. Uh, <laughs> but hey, you guys need to learn from me and my mistakes. Um, so... I think the website is the number one most important thing that I would recommend to you guys is take the time to put together a website. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Mine, mine is horrible. I'll put a link below so you guys can check it out. Um, again, I'm not like super tech savvy, but it works. And, and I think what's really important about the website is you're getting people People that are going to that like your work and they are probably people that are looking to buy knives rather than just scrolling on Instagram. These are people that say, hey, I like this guy's work. Let me go look at it and see pricing and all this stuff. And the one thing um, that I can't stress enough and how important I think it is, is a lot of these websites have um, a contact list to where, and I'm sure you've seen it before, when you go to some random website, a pop-up will come up where it's asking for your email and they're they're just trying to get as many emails as possible to pretty much spam everybody to sell more products. And the reason they do that is because it works. Um, that style of marketing works. And with the knife making thing, it's no different. Um, I think that getting those emails and getting an email list built is so important and I wish I would have started years ago but just for example I think when I did that last raffle knife it was the first emailer I did okay because again I'm just figuring all this stuff out and that's why I'm sharing it right now I did an emailer at the time there was a hundred and I believe like a hundred and fifty people on my email list and those are all people that have either bought knives in the past have come to my website um and signed up for the thing that pops up. I figured out how to do it, amazingly. I figured out how to make the pop up and put your email in. <laughs> um, it's not that hard. Wix is super easy, go check it out. Um, and so when I did that last raffle, I put an emailer out and basically in it, I just said, hey, we're doing a raffle. Go check the link if you wanna buy a spot in it. Um, and it, it was kind of a test to see what kind of response I would get from that, who would see it, and I think I wrote it down, out of those emails that it sends out, 92 or 93 people opened it. Again, out of I think 150 or 160. And then out of those 90 people that opened the email, it showed that I had about 25 to 30 people that actually clicked on the listing for the raffle, okay? So I think what you need to take away from this is this email list is a lot of the time it's people that are really interested in your work. They're people that are buyers of your work. Um, and I think that building that list is, again, so important because it's yours. It can't be taken away from you um, through social media. It's something that if you ever want to contact people, you have the ability to reach out and all these people will see what you're trying to sell at that time, which is so important because of all this limiting with social media. So outside of your website and your Instagram, again, there's tons of other social media platforms that I recommend you get onto. Make sure you've got Facebook and people use Twitter and people use uh, TikTok and all this stuff. And 
Again, this all sounds like a lot to keep up on. And I think that what you need to understand is if you wanna be able to sell a lot of knives and put out a lot of work or whatever it is you're making, it's a lot of work. There's no easy way around it. And I think that a lot of people are lazy. They say, well, I already post on Facebook. I don't wanna do this and do this. Well, you're probably not gonna sell as much as what you need to sell. So, you know, don't be lazy, create accounts and all this stuff, take, however much time you need every day post every day try to put your work out there and trust me it is frustrating and um it you feel like you're wasting your time a lot but at the end of the day if you put in the work if you're creating good content if you're creating good products people will notice and it will catch on so I hope that answers some of those questions. Again, I don't want this video to get an hour long and I still have a few other questions to talk about. So as far as the social media aspect of this, that's some of my best advice um, to get your work out in front of as many people. All right, so without making this video super long, again, I could go on and on about each one of these subjects because it's just every day I live it and I think about it all day. And again, I talk about it so much. The other day, my buddy Neil at Maximus Knives called me and we talked about this for about an hour and you know, really what we're talking about today. And at the end of our conversation, it was like we didn't get anywhere. You know what I mean? I tried to explain so many different aspects of this. And again, it's not one size fits all. You just have to look at the whole big picture of what you want um, and try to take tidbits from everything and make it work for your exact uh, situation. And that's why the second question is selling your knives and pricing your knives and how many knives you need to do um, specifically to be a full-time knife maker. And I don't wanna talk about this long because I've talked about it a lot, but I think it, it's not one size fits all. You have to do what makes you happy. Um, I personally, have got it to where my pricing, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I think it comes with, you know, your skill level, what your work looks like, and what the demand is for your work. It kind of, there's this real happy middle point to where your quality of work, you're meeting the demand, um, and you're happy with what you're doing, I guess, as far as how many you're putting out. And that's what I try to do. And, and again, three or four years ago, it got to where I was getting enough orders that I was able to, to sell my other business that I was doing before this and be able to do this full time. And it's been, again, it's, I couldn't be happier. It's a really unique situation um, that I'm in. Uh, but to be able to be a full-time knife maker, I think, again, it doesn't fit everybody. But what I've seen is a lot of people say they're full-time knife makers, but really they, uh, maybe they're semi-retired already from a different job. Maybe their significant other has a full-time job that they make good money. So a full-time knife maker means a lot of different things. For me, my wife stays at home with my four-year-old son. I'm the sole provider for our family. Um, so it's a really stressful situation. It's, it's always, a, I always am trying to push and push and push and create as much business as I can to be able to make ends meet. And I think that I, you know, it's hard. I guess that's what it comes down to. It's a really, really difficult thing to do. Um, and I think that it's not for everybody. There's so many working pieces that have to fall into place to make this work. And I've worked my butt off to make it work. Um, a lot goes on behind the scenes that I don't talk about. I don't show you guys, um, but there's so much that goes into this that <laughs> it's unbelievable really. Um, but anyways, okay, I'm rambling about this. Let's go on to the third question. So the third question, which is kind of an interesting one, um, which a couple people asked about, which was surprising, is what do you do if you get an unhappy customer? Um, which, and I read that and I was trying to think, you know, out of, God only knows how many knives I've made, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds um, of having anybody that was unhappy. And 
maybe somebody has been, but I've never had anybody say, hey, Matt, I got the knife and I'm disappointed in it. That's Luckily, that's never happened. And I think that, um, you know, it could happen tomorrow and I'll deal with it if it does happen. But I think what you need to be clear on is what you're selling, what the person's getting. Um, make sure your photos really show your work properly, um, that you're not hiding stuff in your pictures, that you're really clear about everything. And I think that would probably solve about 99% of the problems. Now, I guess for example, if somebody called me tomorrow and said, hey Matt, I got this knife from you and man, I just really don't like it. <laughs> like, let's, just, let's just say somebody called and said that. Um, I think that you have to kind of take the emotional aspect out of this as far as like, you know, you spent your time and energy on this item and gave it to them. You're proud of it. You have to take that out of it and think of it as a business and say, you know, handle it the best way you can. If somebody said that to me and they were respectful and they were kind about it, I would say, send me the knife back. I'll give you your money back. I'll make you a new knife. I'll do whatever it takes to make it right. Um, and I think that that's something that, especially as a small business, you have to do. I mean, I think it's kind of part of the deal. You have to expect to make some repairs, do stuff like that to make the situation right. Because the only thing you really have in this whole thing is your name. And if you start screwing people over and sending out work that isn't up to par, it's going to come back to bite you and that's not what you want to do. So I always say, you know, bite your tongue, make it right if the person is treating you right about it um, and just do the right thing, I guess. Well, guys, again, thank you for sticking around for all these questions. Again, I'm just trying to put my point of view and perspective uh, out there so you guys can kind of get where I'm coming from with what I'm doing and trying to answer some of these questions. The last one uh, was from my buddy, Well Made Knives. Um, he asked, he, he pretty much asked, how do you find the right demographic uh, to sell your knives at? And, and I think that it's something that I am still working on. I think that what happens, at least what I see is a lot of knife makers kind of pick an avenue and they just stick with that avenue and go that direction. So for example, if you make knives, uh, you pick a hunting knife, you make that and maybe your price points $300 and that's what you make. And maybe you have some variables on that. And what I found is unless you Really, I don't see any company that's able to do that. If you look at if you look at all the big guys, every big company out there, whether it's like production knife makers or whether it's the biggest of big dogs in the custom knife world, um, they have a huge variety of what they're putting out. And that's what I try to do as well, is I try to meet the demand of the regular working guy like me that if you spend 250 to 300 on a knife it's a big deal for you and i also try to meet the more higher end clients to where they're okay spending a thousand or fifteen hundred on a knife um you know that higher end collection kind of style so i think what i would recommend for everybody to do is don't just make a bunch of different knives if you're not confident in each one but make knives at different price points and different styles um, to where, especially now with how uh, kind of unsettling and weird the economy is, you have to be able to meet every different uh, demographic of knife buyer to really be successful, I think. Um, and again, I've experimented with a lot of this stuff and I find that you really just have to hit it all. Don't focus on one thing. Um, you know, don't focus on one knife design and think that you're going to be a full-time knife maker off of one knife design because it's not going to work. Um, at least it probably won't work. Uh, again, look at what a lot of these really big companies are doing. I mean, just take Benchmade, for example, or take Spyderco, for example. They're making hundreds of different knife designs and different blade steels uh, to hunting, culinary, 
all of these different knives to be able to make it work at the end of the day. And I think that that's what a lot of people struggle at. Um, a lot of people I've spoken with really have a niche that they're stuck in um, and they have to spread out from that to be successful, I think. All right, guys, without this video going on forever, again, I could talk about this all day, but I do need to get some work done today. I hope that I answered some of your guys' questions. I pretty much hit on everything that was asked. Um, if I didn't answer your question, again, I apologize. I just tried to be as general as possible because I kind of hate making these like videos where I just talk at a camera because I feel like it's boring. But I hope that it helps some of you guys. Um, and I hope that just sharing a little bit of my perspective helps you guys. Again, don't just do what I'm saying, but take it with a grain of salt and kind of add it to your repertoire of what you're already doing. And I think it can possibly help you. Um, if you guys like this video, if you have... If you want me to do more of these videos, please let me know um, because I, again, I think it can be helpful, but I uh, just have a hard time sitting here talking at a camera all day. Um, but anyways, if you uh, found it helpful, make sure you guys go check out my Patreon account that I started. Um, I've talked about it in the past, but it's a really cool way for you guys to basically just show that you appreciate the content I'm putting out the cheapest one is five dollars a month you can get in on it and uh it means a lot when somebody signs up for that it means a lot to me um and i just really appreciate it if you would go at least go check it out think about it five bucks a month uh for me i put out a weekly video and i'm really trying to just help out makers in general with all the content i'm doing so again link in the description to go check that out if you have some other questions you want me to cover put them in the comments below and I will add it to the video list. I got to get some work done today, guys. Hopefully this helped and um, have a good one.